In this lesson, we're going to examine the differences between the window and the document object as it relates to development. So, so far in this course, whenever we wanted to select something on the web page, we've used something like document and then get element by ID, and then we're able to find the element. And that is perfectly fine. And that's going to be something that you're going to be using quite a bit if you're using vanilla JavaScript. Now, another thing that you may not be aware of if you've never used it before is above the document tier. So above the document hierarchy is something called the window. So if I say window here, you'll see that this returns a window object. And if you expand it and scroll down, you'll see this is actually a pretty massive object. There are all kinds of things that you'll find in here. One very notable one is actually the document. So right here, whenever you're working with the document, you're actually working with the document that is nested inside of the window. And just for intuitive purposes, JavaScript gives you the ability to simply call the document and then it automatically knows that you mean the document that is inside of the window object. And so if you want to test this out, just like we ran document.getElements by class name and then we passed in topics like we've done in previous guides and this returned an html collection of all of the divs with each one of the topics and as a quick aside uh, in different parts of this course i've mentioned how because this has the brackets that it's an array technically it is not an array it's what's called a html collection it's very similar to an array and you can use it in a very similar manner, but there are a few JavaScript functions and library methods that you can't use it on, such as some of like the map methods and filter and uh, some of the reduce items that they need to work with an array. You can always convert this directly to an array. And so that's just a quick aside, just in case you uh, have heard me call it an array. It's mainly because you can pretty much use it the same way. You can iterate over it with for each and you can search for elements in it. You can get the length, uh, but it is a very subtle difference. And so uh, getting back to the main point on the difference between window and document. So you saw how we were able to do this. If I were to call up that same code and say window dot document and run the same thing, you can see that we get the exact same HTML collection back. And so the window does nest the document inside of it. And so we're able to use this shorthand where we can call document and it references everything here. So why are we going through this? Well, there's a couple reasons. One is that if you are working with alerts, those are actually found inside of the window object. So if I click here, and scroll down, you can see that if you need to work with alerts, that is technically considered inside the window, not in the document. So that's where you'll have an alert pop up on the page, such as something like this. So alert, hi there. And when it says hi there up here, this is actually lives inside of the window and not the document. So that's one thing to keep in mind if you're having to manipulate the alert. Another reason, and this is a very key reason that I've run into in the past, and it can be a little confusing if you've never done it before, is this page here doesn't have any iframes. Uh, iframes where you can embed another website inside of yours. And so if I switch to another page, this isn't YouTube. If anyone's gone through the Flexbox course, this is the capstone project for the Flexbox course where we recreate YouTube. And this is a actual embed and YouTube uses a iframe embed. So this is an iframe inside of our HTML site. And so if I call window here like normal, so if I say window document and I see what's inside of this document, as you can see, when I highlight it, this is everything we'd expect. It's our doc type, HTML, our body, and it's highlighting everything up here. So this is our document. But now let's go and inspect our iframe. So if I click on inspect, 
and click on the iframe and it shows exactly where that resides in the HTML. What it happens and what the browser does whenever you bring an iframe in is it actually, it, this iframe lives outside of the document. And so even when we come to the console, you can see it's no, no longer saying top. Now it has this weird little hash. And let's try to run that same code again. So if I say window document now, it acts like it's the same, but look at this. Now it's no longer highlighting the entire site. Instead, it is highlighting only the iframe. And if I click on this, it is now bringing me not the head that we had before and the body tag. The body tag here is just for the iframe. It is just for the embedded video that YouTube is sending us. And so this gives you the ability to treat an iframe very similar to how you treat your own document. So if you need to change any values on there or anything like that, then you need to highlight it. You need to, you, typically the way you would structure it is you would wrap it up in some type of div and then you can traverse through that and then grab the secondary window object. So from a visual perspective, just so you can see how it'll work, the entire window itself is the window object. And this is where you'd be able to perform tasks such as seeing the width of the window object to see if a user is on a smartphone or a tablet or if they're on a full desktop browser like I am here. And so that, is, that encompasses everything that you see here. The document is the actual HTML file that gets sent whenever it communicates with the query, so or whenever it communicates with the server. So when you communicate with the server, it sends that HTML document, that resides within that window object. And then when you're working with an iframe, such as an HTML embedded video, now it's sending a window. Even though it looks like it resides in the document, it actually is outside of it. It's outside of the document scope because technically this is its own website. And so this has its own set of window properties. And so here we'd have a window here and inside of this is its own document. And then we have our wrapper window that contains the main document. And so they can be treated independent of each other. And so that's the main set of key differences between the window and the document.